Welcome to In The Workshop. In this episode I'd like to show preparing for the hydraulic test of my model locomotive boiler. And the locomotive about to be tested is my small 7 quarter inch gauge titch that I built in 1996. Here are two safety valves, one is dismantled and the other one is complete. I used this safety valve that's been dismantled to put some pressure into the boiler so I could run my engine using compressed air. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show how safety valves work. This is the safety valve body that I've just removed from the boiler and this is a stainless steel ball. The ball fits on a seat in the bottom of the valve. This part is the spring carrier and here's the spring going onto it. The top part of the safety valve is threaded and it screws into the body holding everything in place. By moving the position of the threaded part you can apply more pressure or less pressure to the spring. In this clip I'm showing the tightening of the centre section using a pair of circlip pliers. And then I use the same circlip pliers to tighten the ring. This locks everything in place. But in this clip I'm dismantling the safety valve because I'm going to make an adapter from this safety valve. But I just thought I would show you all the component parts and how it's put together. The internal thread of the safety valve body is 7 16 by 26 threads per inch. And I'm going to make an adapter that screws into this. Here's a piece of brass hexagon which will be fine for the job. And here's a piece of brass hexagon fitted in the lathe chuck and I'm turning this at a very high speed, mainly because I've speeded up the video. From the sound the tool is making and the finish that I'm getting on this piece of metal, I think it's time to change the carbide tip on the tool, but it will do for this job. As a general rule, when turning brass, the tool should make a hissing noise and not a squeaking noise like this. A squeaking lathe tool is a sure sign that the tip is blunt. So if it's not a carbide tip tool, resharpen it on a grinding wheel. If it's a replacement tip tool, throw away the tip or at least rotate it to another face and you will see and hear the difference in the quality of finish and the sound it makes. After turning down the diameter of the brass hexagon to 7 16 of an inch, it's time to thread it. And for this, I'm not using a tailstock die holder because I don't have a tailstock die holder fitted with a 7 16 by 26 threads per inch die. Instead, I'm using a manual die holder and this is perfectly fine. You will notice that the tailstock chuck is hard up against the die holder and this keeps it square to the work. The tailstock is locked in place and what I'm doing is applying very gentle pressure by rotating the hand wheel on the end of the tailstock quill to make sure that the die remains square to the work. When you're about halfway down the piece of work that you're threading, the tailstock's not required anymore because the die will automatically be at the same level as the thread it's just cut. Having said all that, a tailstock die holder is a better option, but as I seldom use 7 16 by 26 threads per inch dies, it's not really worth fitting a die of this size to my special tailstock die holder system. So the thread's okay, now it's time to drill a hole down the centre of the piece of work. And as always, I start off by using a centre drill, followed by a twist drill. In this case, it's a 3 16 of an inch down to twist drill, which is about right for the hole down the centre. Once I've drilled this all the way through, it's time to reverse the part in the chuck and face across the front of the work. And then what I need to do is drill a larger hole, which will be tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. And just for the record, the tapping size drilled for 5 16 by 32 that I would use would be 9 30 seconds of an inch. And now with the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap fitted in the tailstock chuck, it's time to thread it. I'm doing this by hand. I could do it under power, but it's better to thread manually for a job like this. Breaking off the tap in the work would not be very desirable. When turning the chuck by hand for a job like this, you can feel when the tap has got to the bottom of the hole. That doesn't mean that I can't withdraw it under power, but when you do this, support the tailstock, help it along. That way there's no chance of damaging the thread when you withdraw the tap. You could of course withdraw it manually, it's the same difference, it's just quicker if you do it under power. The main thread into the boiler is half inch by 26 threads per inch, so why didn't I make an adapter to screw directly into the boiler? Well I don't know really, but I thought it would make an interesting video showing you how to turn up adapters like this. And it's good to have a box of adapters with different thread sizes for the hydraulic testing of model steam boilers. 
This is a steam turret in the cab and as you can see I've removed the pressure gauge. The thread for the pressure gauge adapter is 5 sixteenths by 32. Here it is. And I suppose I could have just fitted a 5 sixteenths by 32 union adapter into the turret and connected the water supply from my test rig there. I fitted a blanking plug to the turret and in this clip I'm removing the other safety valve. I also fitted a half inch by 26 threads per inch blanking plug into the other bush in the boiler. And now it's time to fill the boiler. There isn't a hand pump on this engine, so I just put a funnel into the hole and pour quite a lot of water in there. But obviously not enough. As you can see, this is where the water level is at the moment, and it needs to be right to the top. This is a hydraulic test using water, so there must be no air at all in the boiler. I refilled the water bottle and now I'm filling the boiler right to the top. And at this stage I'm trying to resist the urge to go to the toilet. That's enough of that. It's time now to fit my special safety valve adapter with the 5 16 by 32 threads per inch inlet. This is my old vice in the outer part of the workshop. And what I'm doing at the moment, using a piece of Scotch-Brite, is cleaning up both ends of a piece of 3 16 copper pipe. Not forgetting to put both of the union nuts on the pipe first. In this clip, I'm applying some Easy Flow number 2 flux. And now it's time to heat the pipe to red heat. I've found it's best to do this slowly at first, and that will boil off all the water, and that way the silver solder flux stays where you need it. If you're blasting straight away with the blowtorch, you may even blow the flux away from the job. In this clip you can clearly see that the silver solar flux flows into the work between the union cone and the pipe. I apply some silver solder as soon as it reaches red heat. You don't want to cremate the part. You can clearly see how the molten silver solder flashes around the joint. This is the other part, so just watch it carefully. By way of a demonstration, I went in too quickly with full heat and you can see that it moved the flux around. I put it back in position before I continued heating. Capillary action is surprisingly powerful. Watch this, it actually sucks the fitting back onto the pipe. As soon as the pipe had cooled, I didn't bother cleaning it up. I fitted one end to my adapter in the boiler and the other end I'm fitting to my test rig. So it's just about all ready to go. I'll be showing the hydraulic test in detail in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.